So, welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Srila Prabhupada. All goes to you, to you, Maharaj. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable association and time. Now I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mother Runda. Please place the verse on the board. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalaya Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamaya Namaste Saraswati Deva Om Vamari Vajarini Nivishri Shasin Yamadi Pastyat Yade Sitarine Panchikalpa to Vishya Kripa Sindhu Bhai Vichya Patita Nam Pavne Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Nam Nubaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Vata Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare so go right down to the translation. Okay. And so this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 1. And this is verse number 20. Translation, Sri Sukadeva Goswami continued after thus being fully instructed by Lord Brahma, who is the spiritual master of the three worlds, the Urata, his own position being inferior, offered obeisances, accepted the order, and carried it out with great respect. Shri Prabhupada's purport, Sri Priyavata was the grandson of Lord Brahma. Therefore, according to social etiquette, his position was inferior. It is due to the inferior of cat, it is duty of the inferior to carry out the order of the superior with great respect. Priyavata therefore immediately said, yes, sir, I shall carry out your order. Priyavata is described as a Mahabhagavat, great devotee. The duty of a great devotee is to carry out the order of the spiritual master or the spiritual master of the spiritual master in the Purampara system. As described in Bhagavad Gita for two, Evam Paramparam Praptim. One has to receive the instructions of the Supreme Lord through the disciplic succession of chain of spiritual masters. A devotee of the Lord always considers himself a servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord. So they want me to do another verse. Okay. So that verse is just sufficient in itself, but since this is the rule we follow. Lord Brahma was then worshipped by Manu, who respectfully satisfied him as well as he could. Vivata and Narada also looked upon Brahma with no tinges of resentment. Having engaged Vivata in accepting his father's request, Lord Brahma returned to his abode, his Satyaloka, which is indescribable by the endeavor of mundane minds or words. Purport. Manu was certainly very satisfied that Lord Brahma had persuaded his son Priyavrata to take the responsibility of ruling the world. Priyavrata and Narada were also satisfied. Although Brahma had forced Priyavrata to accept the management of worldly affairs, thus breaking his vow to remain Brahmachari and completely engage in devotional service. Narada and Priyavata did not look upon Brahma with resentment. Narada was not at all sorry that he had been frustrated in making Priyavata a disciple. For Priyavata and Narada were exalted personalities who knew how to respect Lord Brahma. Therefore, instead of looking upon Brahma with resentment, they very feelingly offered him their respect. Lord Brahma then returned to his celestial bowl, known as Satyaloka, which is described here as being impeccable and being unapproachable by words. 
It is stated in this verse that Lord Brahma returned to his residence, which is as important as his own personality. Lord Brahma is the creator of the universe and the most exalted personality within it. His lifetime is described in Bhagavad Gita 17, Sarasya Yuga Pariyantama Har Ayad Mamano Vidu. The duration of the four yugas is 4,300,000 years. When that is multiplied by a thousand times, it equals 12 hours in the life of Brahmana, Brahma. Therefore, we cannot factually comprehend even 12 hours of Brahma's life. Say nothing of the one. 100 years that constitute understand his abode. The Vedic literature describes that in Satya Loka, there is no birth, death, old age, and disease. In other words, since Satya Loka is situated near to Brahma Loka or Brahma's effulgence, it is also as good as Vaikuntha. Lord Brahma's abode is practically in the from our present status. Here has been described as Avan Manasam Gochada. Beyond the description of our words and our imaginations or of our minds, Srimad Bhagavatam thus describes the abode of Bhakti Na. In such a year, which means when there is no lamentation, there is no Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we can't hear you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Mataji. Can can anyone hear Maharaj? No. Okay, which is situated many millions and billions of years away. There is no lamentation. There is no able age, death, anxiety, or influence of the enemies. Srimad Bhagavatam 2, 2, 26 and 27. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. So here we have an interesting combination of we're getting a little idea of the vastness of Brahma's existence. Um, his duration of life is actually mentioned it's 311 billion 40 no 311 trillion I'm sorry 311 trillion 40 billion years. So that's equal to 100 years of our life. So if we live for 100 years, mm, Brahma's 100 years in our calculation would be 311 trillion 40 billion years. Mm. And here it describes that no one can understand the abode of Lord Brahma, no one can approach it. Of course, one can achieve Brahma Loka, but Brahma Loka is outside of the spiritual realm. It's the highest planet, it's situated way above all the other 
planetary systems. And it, uh, as it says here, it's just near the Brahman of Fulgens, where you go into the spiritual realm. He gets the light from the Brahman, from, from the Vaikuntha light coming down into his area. So we can't imagine what Brahma's life is like. It's just way beyond our existence. So here Brahma took the trouble to instruct Priyarat. Narada had instructed Priyarat or had encouraged Priyarat to stay where he was. Why get entangled in household life? Why get entangled with all these responsibilities? You're a Brahman, you're a Brahmachari, you're fixed in devotional consciousness. Continue, continue with your prayers, your meditations on the Lord. And uh, you're perfect. But there was an emergency in the universe. No one could take the position and the position was needed to be fulfilled. It was a service needed. Somebody had to become the chariot, drive the chariot, or he had to become, take the position of the sun god. In other words, he had to drive the planet, the chariot all around the universe. And that chariot actually uh, precedes the movement of the sun. So as that chariot goes, the sun follows like that. And it's nicely described in detail how, you know, this works out, how the cosmic creation has actually manifested. But here we see something interesting um, although Narada is powerful, Narada is the sage among the demigods, and his word is absolute. Still, Brahma overturned that and came to encourage uh, a brahmachari to take up household life and take the responsibility of ta taking over the management of the universe. Priyavad was one of two sons, major sons. You have, you have King Uttanapada, which is his brother, who was the king of the world also, the father of Dhruva Maharaj. And you have Priyavrata, and they were, they were brothers. And they were both sons of uh, Swayambhu Vamano. So then, uh, obviously, Swayambhu Vamano is the son of Lord Brahma. And therefore, Priyavrata is his grandson. And so, having accepted the order of his grandfather, who was a very influential and one of the most influential personalities in existence, he gave up what he thought was best for him, Nara also encouraged him, to accept the orders of the spiritual master. So here the point is very important to understand because what we want to do, I see that's nice, but what the Lord wants us to do, that's actually our success. So here, the Lord encouraged Lord Brahma to, to do this work and give Priyabra to that responsibility. So the order of the spiritual master, and the order of the superior, in this case, Lord Brahma, takes precedence over everything. Um, there's a nice uh, pastime. It's in the um, seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, towards the end of the seventh canto, describing how the demons and the devas were fighting. And in that fight, the uh, Maya Donovan was present on the side of the demons. And therefore, when the demons were being killed, if their bodies were still intact, they were thrown into this nectar elixir, and then they were they came to back, back to life with greater enthusiasm and greater strength. So the demigods were being frustrated as they were killing the demons. The demons were returning back to life by the grace of Maya Donovan. So, um, 
The demigods approached Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma made a plan. And that plan was to incarnate himself and Lord Shiva, both of them together as a cow and a calf. So they took the form of a cow and a calf and they came into the area where that, that fountain of immortality was and they start drinking the waters. Uh, when the demigod demons saw that, they were frustrated. And at the same time, Maya Donovan, he didn't try to stop it. He said, this is the plan of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, what can we do? We simply have to accept. So Prabhupada writes in his commentary on this particular pastime, which applies to this particular uh, pastime here, is that you have your plan, I have my plan, but Krishna's plan is really the real plan. So it's a duty. It's actually the, the most important duty to find out what is the plan of the Lord for us. The Lord has a particular plan how each of us can become Krishna conscious and go back home back to Godhead. That's his plan. He wants all living entities to take up devotional service, become purified, and return to his spiritual abode with eternal loving service. How that plays itself out, we never, we can't see clearly, but we can understand through the guidance and instructions of the spiritual master. Therefore, one should always seek out the instructions of the spiritual master in the execution of their devotional service. Therefore, it mentions Vashila Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Devotion that um, the first stage of bhakti is to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, Adal Guru Guru Vastaka. The second one is to take initiation from the spiritual master. And the third is to inquire from the spiritual master into the knowledge of transcendence. But in that explanation of these different stages, it said one should also approach one's spiritual master from time to time and ask, how can I serve? Or how can I make you know, greater advancement in devotional service. One should not assume, well, you know, I'm a devotee and I know what I'm going to do. Therefore, I know because I know the process, I chant Hare Krishna. That's, therefore, I'll, you know, I can make my, I'll make my way back. Well, you'll see here and by this example, you know, Priyavrata had his own idea and Narada also supported that. But Brahma had something different. So the spiritual master, in this case, taking the position of Lord Brahma, knows exactly how to guide the disciple in the practice of the devotional service. For instance, you, we may want to serve in one way, and therefore, because it's not the best way, we won't make what we say uh, regular progress. Therefore, the disciple should work carefully under the guidance of the spiritual master or under the spiritual master's representatives who also carry out his orders in helping this disciple move forward on the path back home, back to Godhead. So it's incumbent, that's the word, incumbent upon each and every one of us to know how can we make progress in devotional service. And therefore, instead of the spiritual master chasing after us and finding out what we're doing, or every time we have a problem, then we send a letter and say, Guru Maharaj, this is my problem, help me out. We should be considering making inquiries in a regular way, and you might think, well, I shouldn't bother with my spiritual master. He's got so many disciples. He's got this, he's got that, he's got, he's got to preach, he's got to travel, he does this. Well, the, the main duty, 
the main responsibility in relationship to duty for the spiritual masters to make sure his disciples can go back home back to Godhead. Otherwise, why would he accept disciples? <laughs> Not just to collect numbers or to, uh, you know, fill up the, the, register, the, the roster with all his disciples' names. No, he has to bring them in. But how he does that is up to him. He can do that in different ways. He can through directly with his own vakya or through the um, uh, system that is set up in place where the disciple gets help and support from other senior devotees who are more, what we say, connected to the disciple in the area that the disciple. And that's important to understand. Otherwise, we may decide, well, it says in the, it says in the scriptures, I should, that prashada distribution is a very good way to, to serve the Lord. Obviously it is. But that, that may not be the only way that the spiritual master needs your service or sees how best that you can serve. Because that's mentioned in the first canto in Srimad Bhagavatam that the this spiritual master has to see the nature of the disciple and engage them accordingly. And that is also part of the process of elevating this, the disciple back home, back to Godhead. So we see the intervention of a senior personality in this case here. It apparently looks like everything is good with Priya Vrata, but this particular pastime goes beyond the need of the spiritual master. There was a need in the universe and Priya Vrata had the ability to do it. He was um, qualified to take that responsibility of to acting on the part of the sun god. And because he had that and no one else had, his service was needed. So he made a sacrifice in order to carry out a needed service. And that, and therefore, he's glorified for that. Of course, at first he was resistant when the, the request came from his father, Swayam Bhuvamana. And his resistance was based on his own fixation in devotional life. But then again, a lot of times, what do we know what's best for us? Therefore, the spiritual master is there. Sometimes we inquire from the spiritual master, how can I serve? Prabhupada said, I never asked. <laughs> I never asked my spiritual master many questions, but I did ask him one question. How can I serve you? Prabhupada well, goes on to say he gave me that instruction in 1936 in Radha Kund when they were together, when Bhakti Siddhanta, you know, and in a letter to, to our Srila Prabhupada just before he left. So the same instruction came out that you are an intelligent person. That was the first meeting too in 1922. Take this knowledge of uh, you know Sanatan Dharma and spread it to the Western speaking. Prabhupada was thinking, oh, I want to preach. So Prabhupada spent so many years, our Prabhupada, from after he left his household life, he was preaching in India. He got a place in Jhansi, which was not too far from Delhi, and he was preaching there. But everything he did, there wasn't any fruit. He made one disciple. And then it was also because it was destined that Srila Prabhupada go to the West. And that was the instructions of the spiritual master. So, uh, yeah, so we even learned from the instruction of uh, our, our spiritual master how he tried to carry out the desire to preach, but he was preaching where his spiritual master had uh, not indicated but had, he wasn't preaching where he had indicated. And finally, he understood. And then once he understood completely, he came to America. And then here we are in the Krishna conscious movement. So um, if Brahma, if 
But if Prabhupada had been successful in preaching in India and maybe developed temples there and disciples there, where would the Krishna conscious movement be today? They'd be relegated to the subcontinent of India only. So we see how important it is to accept the instructions of the spiritual master as life and soul. Yasya Devi Prabhaktir, Yata Devi Tata Guru, Tesyaita Pratite Karta, Bhaktisananda Mahatmanaha. One who has implicit faith, this is the word implicit is used in this verse. This verse is from the Swaita Svatara Upanishad 6.8. One who has implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master, all the imports of all Vedic knowledge automatically reveals within the heart of, of the heart of the devotee. In other words, the conclusion of all knowledge comes by the grace of the Lord when one fully surrenders to the instructions of the spiritual master and makes those instructions one's life and soul. This is the, this is the thing. It's not that I have a spiritual master and you know I'm chanting 16 rounds and I'm following the four regulative principles. And I mean, that's nice, but let me see, how, how can I serve the spiritual master as a mission to spread Krishna consciousness? How can I become part of his mission to spread Krishna consciousness to, ever, to, to ever, others? So there are inquiries, you know, that's why that verse spoken by Krishna himself, Tadvidi Patitatena, Paripasyena Sevaya, Upadeksyanti Te Gyanana Tattva Darshanaha. One approaches a spiritual master, Pranipat. Pranipat means humble, full, full obeisances at the lotus feet of the spiritual mind. Paripasyena, inquiring into the process of devotional service in Sevaya, the third of the three principles mentioned in this verse, one should be ready and eager to offer service. We have, sometimes we have devotees, they like to read books and they like to chant and they like to visit holy places and they like to do this and they like to do that and they like Krishna and everything else. But they don't make much spiritual advancement. They're thinking they're okay, but actually re what really means is that one should be eager to serve the mission of the spiritual master. And therefore the mission of the spiritual master is the mission of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who came, Prithivityachi Nagarali Gram, Mori Prasadam, uh, more nam. In every town and village, my name must be chanted, will be chanted. And Mahaprabhu made that statement and around the world as Krishna conscious movement spread. And this is the need of the time also. More than ever, people are in need of this message of Krishna consciousness. Not, it's not only important, it's life saving, it's life giving. So each and every disciple of a bona fide spiritual master should take it upon themselves to try to connect with this mission of Lord Chaitanya and become an interest an instrument in assisting the acharyas in spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. And that can be done in different types of services, but everyone should know how best I can serve if one is not asking that question, how best I can serve, then one may find themselves uh, not making much advancement. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you know, then you're nicely situated. But if there's any hesitation or uncertainty, one should inquire from the spiritual. And then Madsen mentions too, at one point after executing one's devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master and serving, Accordingly, one asks, how can I make more advancement? What do I need to do or what do I need to stop in order for, myself, for me to continue 
making advancement on the path of devotional service. So these things are mentioned in the nectar devotion. It's not like these things are something that we just made up. These are the, these are the principles of a disciple. Disciples should know what they need in order to serve and how to make progress in devotional service. If we are not enthusiastic to understand and apply the teachings of the spiritual master in our day-to-day -day life, we can easily become what we say complacent, mechanical, lackadaisical, or even what we say routine, and just doing some basic things, but not really moving forward in our spiritual life. So uh, this verse, these two verses together really give us a clear understanding of how important it is to accept the orders of the spiritual master. And here in this case, even contrary to what one would like to do for their own self. A lot of times we get message, we get letters from our disciples. Oh, Guru Maharaj, I want, I'm going to serve like this and I'm going to serve like that. Please give me your blessings. <laughs> Don't, this is not some exaggeration. It's things that we come across. A lot of times the, the spiritual masters, they also experience this. The disciple writes and tells the guru what he's going to do and wants the blessings from the spiritual masters. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's good. And it's very, let me say, uh, laudable to want to serve and also become creative in your service. But before you conclude, one should be clear, under, clear that this service is what I'm meant to be doing. And, and of course, if the spiritual master says, well, just work under the guidance of the temple authorities, work under the guidance of the Yatra leader, work under the guidance of your mentor, whatever the spiritual master designates, then that way, even if he doesn't give direct service, if he gives you the guidance you need in order to understand how best to serve, that is good. That is just as good as getting the direct instructions from the spiritual master. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any discussion on these points. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj. It was so wonderful, so wonderful, so instructive and uh, I like the most the point that uh, sometimes we make plans but Krishna have different plans for us. But how can we understand that by the instruction of uh, the spiritual master? So that's why it uh, really shows how important it is to to be in connection with the spiritual master, or as you said, that the representative of the spiritual master plays an important role in our life. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for encouraging us to, to be a part of uh, this movement, of uh, the movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it was so wonderful. Thank you so it much, was, Maharaj, for enlightening what I us. Mentioned, what I mentioned is from, for sincere devotees, those who are not sincere, who are not surrendered, but are practicing devotional service in some capacity, the spiritual master may not give them any instructions or may let them serve accordingly, according to how they want. Because there is another injunction that if a spiritual master gives an instruction to a disciple and the disciple does not follow the instruction, the disciple commits guru avagya, and guru avagya is a major offense, disobeying the orders of the spiritual master, and that will block one's progress. So the spiritual master many times is careful not to give instructions to those who cannot accept instructions, knowing that they will not be able to carry it out or won't be able. So for those who are dedicated and fully surrendered, the instructions will come for others, he may give instructions that are easy to follow so that they will stay connected in devotional service and not become overwhelmed and therefore uh, feel that 
they shouldn't, they can't follow this instruction like that. So that's another, that's a consideration on the part of the spiritual master, not to give an instruction that can't, that he knows, yes, he knows it's not going to be followed. So he has to know that in order not to burn out his disciple like that. But those disciples are called neophytes. They, they remain on the lowest platform, they're prakrita bhaktas. They have some inclination for, for activities of devotional service, but they don't come up to the standard, which is the second class platform, which is the Madhyam platform, which is the platform by which this Krishna conscious movement ex, uh, operates. We operate on the second class platform, not on the first or uh, third class platform. If you can operate on the first class platform, that's the highest, but that's very rare. Second class platform is the Madhyaman platform. And therefore, we have to come up to that standard of practicing on that platform. And that's mentioned, that's described in detail, at least in a particular verse in the Upadesa Amrita, Rupa Goswami's Nectar of Instructions. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Like I was thinking how merciful all the um, devotees are that they come to the Madhyam Varga and uh, it's so, so good for us that uh, otherwise we are not able to get the mercy. So who will get, who will give us the mercy? So thank you so much, Maharaj, for making us understand clear about that how sincere we should be or how sincere a disciple should be towards his spiritual master and what are the responsibilities. So thank you so much, Maharaj. It was so enlightening and uh, so instructive, so much to improve and learn. So thank you. And uh, now I will request devotees, uh, if they have any questions, they can go ahead. Thank you, Hare Krishna. We... Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj. Uh, thank you for a wonderful lecture. Uh, I have a question on your uh, the initial part of Prabhupada's purports, where, uh, and, and also you explained that uh, Narad Muni was instructing uh, Maharaj Priyavrat, but on Brahma's arrival, then he had to change his, his decision. So in that instant, uh, was uh, so Brahmaji was also acting as a guru, but also Narad Muni was also his spiritual master. So in that instance, the uh, spiritual master was training him to be uh, in his brahmachari life, uh, but also then he then entered the Krihasta life. So he took the instructions of superiors uh, with with uh, in in conjunction in in align with Narad Muni as well at that time. So. I think that also happens with us that sometimes you have a, a specific instruction that's given, but then, then also there's a, another instruction that comes from a higher authority, uh, which maybe not are in sync. Yeah, well, this was the spiritual master of, of uh, Narada. So Brahma is the spirit, Narada is spiritual master. Uh, so in so that, yes. obviously there's there is a you know an echelon of hierarchy that one has to follow. Just so it's, just like you might say, well, the um, you know, for instance, if Srila Prabhupada was still here on the planet, and one of his disciples was given an instruction to someone else to do something or to act in a certain way. And if Prabhupada didn't approve of it, then he would change that. And that happened many times in, in uh, engaging his disciples. A lot of times he put his least senior uh, sannyasis in charge of many of the places around the world to execute the yatras there and to develop them. But sometimes Prabhupada would have to change things that they did. 
because he felt it wasn't what what was what it wasn't best. Well, Prabhupada was there to do that. Now, now we have to go by our spiritual master. And then, of course, if we're working under the guidance of the spiritual master's representative, which is usually, we might say, the yatra leader or the, uh, um, or the temple president, like that, or in the, we have this mentorship system where the mentor acts in that regard, being the representative of the spiritual master, more like a shiksha guru for the disciple. So um, maybe some of us are afraid to inquire. We have this fear, oh, I shouldn't inquire because I might get an instruction I can't carry out or I won't be able to carry out or something. So we stay behind and don't inquire and go on like that. But we don't make any advancement like that because the whole the whole basis of Krishna consciousness is guru disciple relationship. Because the guru is representing Krishna. And Krishna is the original spiritual master. Thank you, Maharaj. So I think it's quite important in that relationship, as you said, that from a disciple's perspective, we, we have to be true uh, and eager to ask and then be enthusiastic to follow what comes mm -hmm. after and not be selective. The spiritual master is not going to break the disciple. Even if the instruction becomes a little difficult, the, the, the disciple can further inquire into that relationship based on that disciple, that this instruction, and say, well, Guru Maharaj, maybe this is a little something that I not be able to do or it was too difficult. If one humbly you know, inquires into the instruction that one gets or wants clarification on how to carry it out, that's in line with the etiquette. That can be done. So it's not that the spiritual master is, is in the mood of a father, but he's not like this, uh, you know, personality who doesn't listen to anything and just gives instructions and wants everybody to run as fast as they can. No, he's willing to hear how the disciples are doing, whether there's some change, some adjustment. Uh, so all these things are part of the relationship. <laughs> but if we don't make that connection in one form or another, either directly or indirectly, then we might find ourselves not. It's like it's the example of the wedding party and the story of the wedding party. So there was a wedding party and they were going to have a wedding the next day, but they had, in order to get to the place, they had to cross this river by boat. So it was late at night and the whole wedding party got in to the boat and then they all went to sleep Knowing, knowing that the, tomorrow morning they will wake up on the other side and then they get ready for the wedding party. So they had the men there who were doing the rowing of the boat. So they rowed all night. The next morning when everyone woke up, they were in the same place. Although they made efforts to cross, nothing happened. Why? Because they left the anchor down and therefore the boat didn't move, although everybody was rowing. So we can be, you know, thinking we're making an advancement, but if the anchor of our false ego is keeping us <laughs> in, you know, in our own understanding of how to do things, and we might get some advancement, but hardly any. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, any, anyone else? Hare Krishna. 
please accept the Thank, thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, pointing out you're, a lot of you're, I think I can. You're breaking up. Can you? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me, Maharaj? It's it's breaking up in and out. So maybe. Uh, is it better now, Maharaj? Oh, much better. Okay. There it is. Yeah. yeah th thank you so much for pointing out uh, the the most important aspect of surrender to. To the spiritual master. Uh, the part that I usually struggle with or I'm trying to work on is especially when we are connected to the representatives of the spiritual master that we deal on a daily basis. At least I find myself there is obedience in me, not necessarily surrender uh, in the sense like because we deal with them on a daily basis Maybe they're not at a platform where I expect like, you know, when in correlation to us into the spiritual master level or whatnot. So I feel that sometimes the struggle is, yes, you know, this instruction is coming. Maybe it's not practical or whatnot. So there's so many uh, shortcomings on my side in, in, in terms of faith on the representative of the spiritual master. How to overcome those difficulties? It's inquiry. If you have a lack of faith, inquire into the instructions to get clarification. And just uh, voice your hesitations or your uh, difficulties. If you can't get any resolve on that platform, then you can go to, to the next higher level and say, this is the situation. So we have a chain of command like that. But in any case, you have to eventually come to the point of accepting whatever is ultimately decided. And it's not that we blindly just do things. Well, Prabhupada writes in that in that um, purport of that verse, Tadviri Patipata again from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, blind following and absurd inquiries are rejected. So he writes that blind following and absurd inquiries are rejected. So following blindly means uh, you have to know why you're following. <laughs> if you don't know why, or you're not clear, then there should be some, you know, inquiry or some process for clarification. Otherwise, you may go on and after a while lose your enthusiasm completely. So communication, discussion, understanding, all these are part of the relationship between superiors and juniors. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That's very helpful. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. If we're humble, it's easy. If we're not humble, if we have a preconceived idea how everything should be and we're attached to that, to that preconception, then things become difficult. We might have a preconceived idea how things should be as opposed to how things are, but we shouldn't be attached to it. We should be attached to whatever ultimately is decided. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj. Please accept my humble yeah. obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hello, um, Tiffany. All right. It's good to see you today. Um, I just had a quick question about your response um, to Prabhuji just now. Um, that that um, phrase blind following in um, absurd inquiry are rejected. I missed where that came from. I just wanted to know. Yeah, it's in the purport of that verse, Tadviri Patipatana in Bhagavad Gita 434. Ah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Prabhupada's purport. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you.
Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for another wonderful lecture reminding us how important it is to really focus on the instructions of the spiritual master because we may have so many ideas and so much enthusiasm and so many plans and so many of our own uh, uh, you know desires to please the lord which may not exactly be in line with what is best for us but uh, remembering that ultimately the spiritual master knows what is best and is there to help you make advancement this is really i think crucial for us to make advancement. So thank you so much for, for pointing this out and reminding us how important it is to serve and surrender in the way Krishna wants through the words of the spiritual master. It's very, very important for me to understand this. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, get to Mayapur. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sorry, it's taking, I'm sorry I took a detour. Please forgive me and please give me your blessings to go there soon. Okay, they're waiting for you. Okay. Not to take away from the focus, Guru Maharaj, but from this purport, I'm a little bit confused where it says that in Satya Lok there is no birth, disease, old age, lamentation. But in Bhagavad Gita 8.16, we have the verse which says, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Janma Avat. I don't remember the second line where uh, all are places of misery, wherein there is repeated birth and death, right from Brahma Loka down to the lowest planet. So how do we reconcile these two? Yeah, Prabhupada said Brahma after so many, after his lifetime, he has to, uh, you know, 311 trillion, 40 billion earth years, he has to move on. Mm -hmm. That means because uh, uh, Brahma has such a long lifespan, it's almost like virtually like there's no death because it's so long. Is that how we should understand this last sentence of the purport? Sometimes words are used like that in order to give an understanding of something that is inconceivable. Mm -hmm. The Acharya speak in two ways. One the ways that it's going, the way it actually is, and another way that it is for the sake of preaching. <laughs> Sometimes they appear to be contradictory. Therefore, you have to know the difference. Uh, in this case, <clears throat> as it says that the abode of Brahma is so uh, far beyond our ability to understand, you don't have any descriptions of what it's like on Brahma Loka. There's no details. As it says here, how can we understand his abode? In the Vedic literature described there's no birth, possessed in old age in Satya Loka. Since Satya Loka is situated next to Brahma Loka, now this is an interesting uh, statement because it appears that Brahma Loka and Satya Loka are different. And in other places, it says that Brahma Loka and Satya Loka are the same. It appears that Satya Loka is a little higher than Brahma Loka. But uh, there appears to be some contradiction in statements. That you, the Acharyas would have to explain that, like Jiva Goswami or Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur deals with these apparent statements to show that there actually is no contradiction. So the duration of life in Satya Loka is interesting. It's called, it's 15 trillion, what do we see? No, oh no, it's not, it's even higher. There's million, there's million, billion, trillion, it's even higher than 15. That's not trillion, that's beyond trillion. Three, six, nine, 12. 
Yeah, so it's um, incalculable. Yeah, here, so this, this verse is very important. At the time of the final devastation of the complete universe, the flames of the fire of Ananta, oops, <laughs> from the body, the yogi sees all the planets, universe, and dust. He leaves for such a loka by airplanes, duration of life. So, in most of the devastations, such a loka remains, but there is one devastation where everything is wound up. And that is a different devastation. This verse is from where? This is from Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Bhagavad Gita. That's from Bhagavad Gita. No, it's Bhagavatam 2226. Interesting verse, very interesting. <laughs> So it appears that above Brahma Loka there is Satya Loka. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. So this describes uh, the qualities of Satya Loka. Okay, very nice. Nice, nice. Study this area and they'll give you all the answers to the questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Any other discussions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, can I... Uh, this is Kamudikita Asi from Baltimore. I have a question regarding this one. That in um, Hiranyakashipu, when he performs austerities and Lord Brahma appears to this, uh, give him a benediction, so then he uh, asked for the immortality. Mm -hmm. So the Lord Brahma say, I my this is what I have heard, so that's what I'm repeating. So uh, Brahma said that I myself is not immortal. So how can I avoid you avoid you the immortality? So then he asked the the then he then he pulls, then also the other way, this way or that way. He cannot be killed a day or night. By human, um, by demigods or demons and things like that, and then by the weapon or something. So, could you please explain me a little, little bit? Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Well, that statement is correct. <clears throat> Brahma's body is made out of pure intelligence. There are, there are eight material elements. So earth, water, fire, air, ether are physical bodies, but Brahma doesn't have a physical body like us. There is a subtle body called mind, intelligence, and false ego. We all have that. But Brahma's body is a subtle body. It's made out of pure intelligence. <laughs> So mm -hmm. therefore we can't see Brahma, but still intelligence on the subtle platform is still part of the uh, material energy. And therefore it's also temporary. So when Brahma is saying that he could not give immortality because he wasn't, he was actually you know, not just saying that, that's his position. He also has to leave his body after some time. And you'll see throughout the Bhagavatam, there's times where he had to give up his body. There was one time he, his body got polluted by wrong consciousness and he had to give up that body and that body became fog. And that body became like fog. <clears throat> so yeah, that's true. Brahma also has to die. Mm. Thank you, Mother, for explaining. 
I was wondering about it, that how Lord Brahma also gave up the body and how he's still there. So like that, it's confusing to me. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is Ramagali. Mm. Maharaj, uh, my question is like, you know, you said uh, you can give like uh, some special instruction to your disciple, but for me, like, uh, I am, uh, I don't get that much access to my Guru Maharaj. So, uh, what should I do? I just ask your husband. <laughs> it says, yeah, I know it says that, that the, uh, the husband is the guru of the wife also. <clears throat> so the wife and the husband are both initiated by the same spiritual master, which is, yeah, yeah. yeah then, then the husband also can, should be able to conduct the affairs of the, of the family. Okay. If the husband is not a devotee, that's a different thing. But if the husband if it is a devotee, then, then he represents uh, mm -hmm. he represents your spiritual master. Okay. So for you, it's easy. <laughs> Thank you, Wallace. Thank you so much. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I have to follow <laughs> his instructions. <laughs> it makes life one. It makes life nice when we when it happens like that. <laughs> yeah. If you, have a, if you have if you have a Rani Kashipu as your husband, then it doesn't work. <laughs> but. <laughs> It's not, that's not the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a devotee. And following his instruction is like a key to happy life. As every day when husband and wife, they, uh, they, means wife follows the husband's instructions. So then there is no way of fighting or something. So. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. <clears throat> then, then the husband, when a, when a wife follows the husband's instructions, the husband becomes so inclined to give so many things to his wife. He becomes so inclined. <clears throat> when she is resistant, then he doesn't open up as much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. For sure. <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, thank you very much for emphasizing this, uh, that uh, we should uh, contact uh, the Guru more because I, I uh, really felt that I should uh, ask uh, your opinion more about my services. Um, it's just lately I've heard something which uh, really made me think uh, that... Um, uh, for example, when it's about our, uh, our material life, uh, I mean the material aspect uh, of our life, like a job or things like that, uh, um, it, we should take the responsibility for that. But uh, as I understand, uh, also these aspects uh, affect our spiritual lives too. So how much we should ask uh, the gurus uh, uh, advice, opinion, or instruction uh, regarding uh, the material aspects of our life? Well, <clears throat> basically, and this is the practical understanding, if you can get these questions answered within your own area, with the devotees you are working with, or with the local devotees, then that's the best. It's only when you can't get the answers on that level that you can go to the spiritual master and ask. I see. Uh, thank you very much. Because I, I've heard this uh, opinion that uh, 
when when we we uh, also try to uh, get the instructions regarding these kind of things it's like uh, don't uh, don't take the responsibility responsibility for for our our decisions and it really i became a bit confused after hearing this um, yeah <clears throat> you have to take responsibility but you know, it's not that you have to inquire every day about what to do. If there's a major question and you can't settle it on the local level, then you ask. That's why we are, the ISKCON has become very enthusiastic now to set up this mentorship system all around the world, which will allow for devotees to get extra care and guidance in their spiritual life. I think it uh, it really uh, clarified this this topic for me, so it's uh, much more clear. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. okay, should we conclude here? Now we're running. Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Gail. Hare well, Gail. Hare Krishna. My obeisance yeah. to you. My obeisance is to you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for the answer that you gave to my question regarding doing one's duty, you know, over someone else's duty last week. Tiffany had let me, I had left the class, but Tiffany had let me know that you answered the question later on. You know. And so I, I listened to the recording. And so I wanted to thank you for that answer because I feel that it did give me, it did help me to make some headway into, under, under, into the understanding, you know? Yeah, I felt a little concerned that I didn't really answer your question, but later on after, <clears throat> after we chanted our run one round, then things became clear. So then I made that statement. So I was also feeling <clears throat> a little unhappy that I wasn't able to answer your question at the time you asked. But yeah, you, you, the, the phrase that you mentioned, the phrase that, you know, about um, not being able to go to the mode of goodness, if you, that, that phrase made me, it gave me some insight because, you know, and it made me realize that I feel that those verses, they're really saying if you, if you give up, if you give up your your own duty for the sake of doing somebody else's duty, then that I feel brings you to the mode of passion and and selfishness, which you know takes you away from Krishna, not towards him. So, so that you know your 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 statement made me come to that, and that's why I'm saying that you know I was able to get some headway. Good, good, yeah. I think that that's the understanding. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you very I'm much, Maharaj. Happy that this became clarified. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Tishan. Thank you. Okay, we'll conclude for today. Thank you very much. There is devotees. one hand raised. Somebody raised hand. Bhakta, Bhakta Vatsal Nitai Das. Okay. He, he's my personal assistant, but he can ask anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So are we chanting, Maharaj? Okay. Um, well, yeah, we can, we can chant. <laughs> We should keep that going. <coughs> okay, everyone, as Prabhupada said, sit properly. Thank you, Maharaj. Jai Sri Krishna. Jai Tanya. 
Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Jadadara Sivansari Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sila, Sari Gauda, Mahavinda. Hila Prabhu Parakhi. Hare Nama. Hare 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 Thank you. Oh, very much. Thank you. Yes, yes, Mantri. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So we can offer obeisances to Maharaj now. Thank you so much, Maharaj. 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 Thank you so much, Maharaj